I definitely spent quite a bit on drinking and partying, um, which I knew the money would have gone better to my savings. But you are only young ones and you want to enjoy your early adulthood. Like I highly encourage you to still go enjoy. What I'm saying is not to not enjoy, but it's really just enjoy within your means. Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood, like self-identity, relationships, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. Today's episode is is quite an exciting one in the adulthood journey, specifically at the early stage of it. And it is actually inspired by my niece's experience of recently moving to a new place and starting a new job. It has been a couple really exciting week in our family WhatsApp group, you know, just staying updated with everything that's going on in her life, from moving into the new space and exploring her new neighborhood to listening about the stupid things that she did on her first day of job and like, you know, just the entire experience. Um, My age gap with my niece is pretty close. So she felt like more like a younger sister to me. And to see her going through all of this reminded me of when I first got my first job and my first paycheck and all that experience and I thought that this would be a great idea for a podcast episode since we're talking about adulthood, right? These were the things that I wish I knew when I got my first paycheck and when I moved out to like my own bedroom as an adult. And on top of my own advice, I actually also put this question out on my Instagram. So some of these points that I'm about to share are also like contributed by my friends. So that's exciting. The things that I'll be covering specifically would be number one, what to do with the money, like your paycheck. And number two, what are the things to take note of for your new rental room or your home? The first thing that I want to tell you first, if you are listening to this and this is exactly what you are going through, is congratulations. You have achieved this huge milestone in your life as an adult. And I am really, really proud of you. Regardless on whether or not this is a job for you or whether you love your job or, you know, if the paycheck is big enough, like... This is huge. You have gone from being a student to now being a working adult. And it's big. And I want you to first acknowledge this accomplishment that you did. You may feel like it's nothing, but let me tell you, it is something and you deserve to celebrate it. So in fact, the first tip that I want to tell you is go celebrate. You know, you don't need to celebrate extravagantly. In a very Asian way, I would say take your parents or your family out on a meal because that was how we were taught to do with our paycheck, especially our first paycheck, to thank them for raising you and giving you all that you need to help you to get to where you are now. I think that would be a great sweet gesture if you are blessed enough to have guardians of family that has taken a good care of you so far, right? And secondly is to treat yourself. I wouldn't go too far in terms of spending too much, but treat yourself to something sweet that you like. Like, you know, getting yourself a top of Hagen dust. Like, it's not too extravagant, but it's a nice thing to treat yourself. Um, you know, don't be anxious. Your first paycheck is probably not going to be big enough, but you will manage, okay? Money will grow you will grow, so be patient with it. But yeah, go celebrate. And then now we are going to talk about what to do with your paycheck. I think the most important thing is to have a rough idea on how you are going to budget your month-to-month paycheck, right? So you need to have a good idea 
on how much you need every single month for your necessities. So you need to know how much money is actually going to your rental, your utilities, food. If you are driving, you got to know how much you are spending on your petrol or your parking. If you are commuting, you got to know how much are you spending on, you know, grab rides or taking the train. You have to have a, an, a good idea about the money that's going to these places. If you have to pay for your insurance, you got to know how much money has to go there. Or if you don't have it yet, you probably want to start slowly doing your research and figure out if you need to get an insurance for yourself. Um, these are some things like the month-to-month -month expenses that you should know how much money you need to allocate for it. And then, assuming that you just move out to a new place as well, there probably would be things that you need to get for your new place. For example, if you plan to cook at home, there might be appliances like rice cooker that would be very important for you, or a water kettle, or you know, I'm just looking at my kitchen right now and what are some staples. I feel like air fryer is actually something that's really powerful if you think that you're going to cook a lot but as an Asian household rice cooker is the gem it's the most important thing and it's not like you can only cook rice with it you can cook a lot of different things with it too so that will be some important things and if these things that you need um, you know is something that you cannot afford immediately then perhaps you got to have a list and and prioritize what are the things that you really really need and, you know, take your time to allocate budget on your second and third and fourth and fifth paycheck to slowly gather the money to buy them. One important thing that you need to know when it comes to earning your paycheck is to actually save your money. And I would say that it should be the first thing that, you know, comes out of your paycheck if possible. But in your first few months, you might need some time to adapt and to figure things out first. So I just want you to really keep savings in your mind um, as you are allocating your budget. You know, ask yourself after you review all these expenses that you need, right? How much do you feel comfortable to allocate every single month with your paycheck? Because the tip number two that I want to share with you is to as soon as possible, build your emergency savings, right? And that should be of three to six months at least. So what that means is as you figure out how much you need to get by every single month, for example, you know, it could be 3,000 ringgit. I don't know if that's possible, but I think that could be possible. Like assuming it's 3,000 ringgit living in Malaysia to cover your rent, your food and everything, so you take that number and times it by three or four or five or six, depending on how stable you think your income is going to be like. I would say early stage, at least three months. That would be a great savings to give you a peace of mind in case of emergencies. Now, if you are someone who is blessed enough to already have such a saving in your bank account, even before you get into your first job, that is amazing. And you can start thinking of your investment. But if you are someone who is starting from zero or even a negative amount, if you have student loans, I would say work on this first before you even think about any investment in the form of stocks or crypto or you know, even starting a business, right? Because ultimately having a safety fund, like an emergency savings, would give you a big peace of mind. And I wish someone told me this when I first started my first few jobs because I definitely was not good in saving my money back then, okay? So yes, number one, get a rough idea on how you want to allocate your budget. Number two, build your emergency savings of three to six months. And number three, I'm going to tell you something that you're not going to like listening to. And that is you should definitely hold on as much as possible before you make your first big purchase. You know, now that you are making money, chances are you are going to be so 
tempted to buy that iPhone or plan a travel with your friends or to sign a package for a facial, you know, stuff like that. Expenses that are kind of big and it's not something that you could afford back then on your student budget. I know it is very tempting, but like I said, building that savings is a lot more important for you. So do that first, okay? Before you go on to take on these expenses. And here's the thing, because I noticed that in recent years, there are a lot of like financial solutions out there from e-commerce platform that makes it so much easier for you to spend on this big purchases like you know um, I know the e-commerce platform in Malaysia Shopee has the option to pay later which is kind of like an installment plan under their platform there is also other solutions like um, Atomi that allows you to split your payments into three months stuff like that right even though they are solutions that make things affordable for you I highly, highly encourage you not to get into debts, you know, quote unquote debts, if you cannot afford it. Okay. And that goes into the next point of getting a credit card too. I think getting a credit card actually is very important for you as soon as possible, like when you can do that. And I think generally, I know in Malaysia to apply for a credit card, I think you need like three to six months of like, salary slip to show them that you have a steady income so you definitely want to aim to apply your credit card as soon as possible because that is going to help you to build a long credit history which will come in handy eventually if you want to put on big loans for houses or cars or stuff like that so you want to get credit card as soon as possible But you should always only spend within your limits, meaning that you can spend wisely using your credit card to make good use of the cashback or the point system to, you know, get the benefits as a consumer. But you should never spend outside of your means that you are not able to pay off as soon as possible because credit card interest rates are really, really high and you don't want to be in that debt cycle of constantly knowing that you are on a negative cash flow. So hold on to that big purchase. Do not buy into that buy now, pay later thing. Do not get into credit card debt ever, ever if you really, really can, okay? So those are the things I wish I knew because I got into credit card debt too. (laughs) Ah, you know, all these stupid things that I did, but you are lucky because you have me here to share with you on this kind of stupid things that you shouldn't make in your first few jobs. Anyways, speaking about things that you cannot really afford, I'm also going to tell you straight, you don't need to go to that party if you cannot afford it, okay? So here is when reality would start to set in for you. If you are someone who is not blessed enough, like I said, to have the savings built up even before you start your first job, if you are still really trying to put it all together, chances are you are going to have friends who are on the luckier side who can afford to go for that fancy restaurant or can go to that really upscale party that you know if you were to go for a night, it's going to cost you at least a few hundred or up to a thousand ringgit, right? And when your friends invite you to those parties, it will be very, very tempting for you to say yes. But if you cannot afford it, then don't go. Okay, it's going to feel really sucky for you to know that your friends are able to afford that and they are having fun. And when you scroll on your Instagram stories and you look at all those videos and photos, you are going to feel left out. But I'm sorry to break it to you that it's not worth going to these events, knowing that you are going to stress out financially after that. 
if these friends are true friends, they are going to understand that you are not there yet. And if they love you, they will make plans, other plans that they know you would feel more comfortable financially. You know, so so plan things according to where you are able to afford. That's what I would say. I don't think I've specifically um, been through a situation where I overspent in parties, but I definitely spent quite a bit on drinking and partying, um, which I knew the money would have gone better to my savings. But you are only young ones, and you want to enjoy your early adulthood, like I highly encourage you to still go enjoy. What I'm saying is not to not enjoy, but it's really just enjoy within your means. Like you can always have friends over and drink and do silly stuff or just go to places that are within your budget. And one more thing, like the last tip that I have for you is to actually make time to clean up your room. I know it's kind of random, but I think that the early stage of your adulthood, especially when you are just getting your first few paychecks and you are still trying to figure out your whole entire like financial situation and building that foundation for yourself, chances are there are a lot of things that you're not going to be able to afford or at least you have to say no to because you have priorities on building that savings first, right? And in order for you to do that, that might mean that you are going to stay home a lot. And if you are going to stay home a lot, the least that you can do is to actually keep your space clean and to make it a space that you feel comfortable being at for long period of times. Because imagine like if you are forced to stay home and your home is a mess and... I don't think you're going to love actually staying home and just being there. Feel free to make your room even more aesthetic and comfortable. My tip in doing that is to get nice warm lights. Like you can get really cute bedside lamp like USB lamps for less than 50 ringgit or $50 these days on Shopee or Amazon. Those things make a huge difference by giving your room that cozy, cozy vibes. I'm also a huge plant mama, and there are some plants that are really, really easy to plant. Like this one, Pothos, is so easy to plant. I have so many of them. I've propagated so many of them. And I feel like plants definitely give homes like a very, like it it brings life to your home, right? And, um, you know, candles are a nice touch to it. I like fancy candles that I know sometimes are kind of overpriced and expensive. Um, But you can definitely get some that are not too expensive as well. So I guess my tip is to build a home or a room that at least you feel comfortable and cozy because that is going to make staying home and saving money a lot more bearable. So those were some of the tips that I have. I know one of the advice that my friend also dropped is to not invest on anything that you don't know or you don't understand enough. And I think that is also a very, very good advice I feel like investment is one of those things that you have to learn as you grow and you will make mistakes along the way. And to grow your money, it's an important thing. You know, some people grow their money by investing in stock market or in crypto. Some, like myself, I choose to invest them into business that I can build because I know I have more control over the money, but but that also means that I need to learn to be good in growing businesses, right? And some choose to invest their money in properties like aiming to buy a home. And these are all things that you will need to research and learn yourself and to figure out what is a better investment strategy for yourself. And um, I would say that if I were to be in your shoes right now, I would put in the time to learn more about these things right now, but 
I wouldn't stress out too much about it yet. Because going back to my first point is to build that savings first. After you have that saving, then you can start about thinking how you want to grow the remaining wealth that you have built for yourself. So yeah, I think this episode is quite a short one, but the main points are all here already. I guess what I want to share with you is this is honestly just the beginning of your adulthood journey. And there are going to be a lot of things that you are about to learn, whether it's about life, whether it's about money, or whether it's about yourself. Adulthood is a really dynamic journey and how your life is going to turn out is highly dependent on how you choose to lead your life. You can choose to be really YOLO and just enjoy your life, spend all your money and experience life. That was actually what I did in my early 20s. But at the price of my own financial stability. So I actually did not have any savings in my early 20s and I kind of regret it at my 30s because if I did actually spend my money more wisely back then, I wouldn't struggle as much as I did in my early 30s. Do I regret being YOLO in my early 20s? I mean, what's done is done. I don't really regret it because I felt like I have an amazing early 20s But it will be nice to also have that financial security and stability at an earlier age. So that's all that I can share with you based on my experience. I am just excited for you to get into this journey. You know, don't be afraid to ask questions. If you have people around you that you feel safe asking questions, like your parents, your siblings, your seniors at your work or your friends, ask them questions. If not, this is the reason why I created this platform. I have a forum on my platform where you can request for topics or ask for questions. If there are things that you wish you knew, but you're not too sure where to ask them, please, please, please fill in the form and ask me this question because these are literally content ideas for me as well. And this is the very reason that I created this podcast. So that's all that I have for you today. Congratulations again. I am excited for you in this new journey. And I'll see you in my next episode. Goodbye.